Hello everyone, this is A Gray House and welcome to this documentary for my Pandora holster. Uh, for a long time I've been wanting to use magnets to create a variable uh, blaster storage solution and an accessory and this is uh, what you see here in the center of all these other blasters is uh, the result. Um, this holster is actually capable of very securely housing all of the blasters that you see in front of you as well as pretty much any um, of the smaller single shot uh, pistol type blasters like the uh, Element or Night Finder or uh, proton, but let me go ahead and show you exactly how it accomplishes this. It's rather uh, tidily uh, squeezed down to, to accommodate the Spectre, which was the smallest uh, pistol blaster that I designed it to accommodate. But you'll see that the whole thing just opens right up and is built with uh, some flexibility in um, in the siding for the blaster, which is seated with magnets throughout in order to keep everything in place. Let me go ahead and show you a little bit more about its internal construction uh, by uh, pulling out what remains of the prototype. I gutted it a little bit to get some better measurements for the final version, but the concept works still. Uh, you'll see that the plates, uh, single cardboard plates for as much strength as possible along this flex, uh, flexible siding. Um, the plates had been uh, had sleeves cut in them and magnets inserted in those sleeves and then hot glued into place. I had to take extra special care not to allow hot glue to get on top or bottom of the magnets um, when I was applying it so you know, as to not create this extra layer uh, of uh, substance that the magnets have to pull through in order to be secure. Um, but the, is, these magnets, it's difficult to see, I'm sure, but these are the sort of standard classroom strength magnets. I am not can't remember off the top of my head what the material, uh, uh, the metal they're made of uh, is, uh, but they proved in this prototype um, not strong enough to hold the, the sides together uh, with a blaster uh, in place, you know, to prevent it from falling apart. Now, I could have just lashed a rubber band around it and it would have worked perfectly, but that wasn't a, um, a satisfying solution for me. So instead, I opted to purchase rare earth magnets, which are certainly considerably stronger. I was able to get more strength out of less weight and less uh, uh, volume size. I ended up using uh, three quarter inch disc uh, earth magnets at one eighth inch thickness, and th that thickness actually did not stretch the thickness of the cardboard at all. Um, so that uh, assisted as well, and also made the frame a, a whole lot lighter in the end than the prototype was, even without all the extra adornments and staples and finishing and full skinning uh, that this thing ended up getting. Um, uh, in addition to the magnets in the sides here, this cross piece uh, is also got magnets seated in it. Um, and the most beautiful thing about this blaster um, that I realized in the middle of the design process in my head was that, hey, yeah, I'm working with magnets here, so the whole thing was designed to be 100% reversible. It, without any trouble at all, it can go from being a right-handed holster to a left-handed holster, and that works in the same uh, way regardless of, of how uh, widely it's spread out and what blasters it's accommodating. You know, it, it all just lines up perfectly just because of that wonderful north-south stuff and all the, f and you know, physics, good stuff. Um, another thing I did was thinking about how the larger blasters would be, there'd be less overlap in, in these lanes of magnets. I added more magnets to the furthest edges of these side pieces uh, in order to give more strength and more security when uh, securing larger blasters. Um, I could run the gamut here and show you what... Uh, the holster looks like with uh, each of the blasters in it, uh, but you can see that up on the website. So instead, I'm just going to give you a little demonstration here to prove that I'm not uh, trying to scam anybody here. The, um, the Vigilon has the largest diameter of any of the blasters that I sought to accommodate. I believe 16 and a half inches was what I measured it for, but that's not really important. But here it is, and being gripped by the uh, just the belt loop here. It's not going anywhere. Uh, turned out uh, strong enough to, to get the biggest blaster I wanted to accommodate without a problem. Um, the Speed Swarm can sometimes be a little bit loose. It has fallen, uh, but generally it's not problematic. Um, let's see if it's a little bit finicky and uh, accommodating it was a bit of an afterthought, but. Pretty good. 
uh, no real problems, although certainly it weighs considerably more than any of the others and would have more of a chance of slipping free. Um, Let's see. Uh, the only other real uh, specific thing about its construction, a couple things, uh, because of the large uh, barrel and sight construction on, on the barricade, barrel break, and fury fire, um, I had to figure something out in terms of making room for those barrels to go in and out of the holster. And so this little cutaway was the result, and um, that helps you get them in and out regardless of, of how exactly they're seated. Uh, but that pretty much sums it up for the Pandora holster. Um, I will be doing the video for uh, dual wielding in combat, some little uh, t uh, tactical advice there is forthcoming uh, that should be up on the site soon. Uh, other than that, everybody take care and we'll see you around.